last weekend in Johannesburg. Leadership structures of the league were disbanded in 2013 by the ANC. The Congress has been postponed several times and this will be the first time the league elects a new president since Julius Malema's expulsion in 2012. The race to become the league's president has been marred by claims of irregular auditing processes and allegations of interference from top structures within the ruling party. For more on that story, we are now joined in studio by our contributing editor, Vuyom Voko. Thanks for joining us, Vuyom. So it's a process, Vuyom. Vuyom, why has it taken so long for the ANC Youth League to hold an elective conference since the expulsion of its leader, Julius Malema, in 2012? Well, um, the ANC had issued quite a number of directives, things that had to be done. But um, um, among those that uh, the branches had to reconstitute um, themselves properly, which clearly um, hasn't happened um, but they were uh, they did have their conference last year but it was status was later changed um, because of some irregularities around the composition uh, of delegates and so on so this conference they were supposed to elect their leaders last year but which was postponed to right now but as things stand it doesn't look like they're ready either you have as we speak people going to court in the northwest and in Limpopo uh, contesting the composition of the delegations that are supposed to represent their respective provinces you also have provinces like Gauteng Gauteng was supposed to start with this conference yesterday afternoon um, around five o'clock and they still haven't started they have been arguing over you know who should represent and so on. So it's, it, it doesn't look good at the moment. Now, why is there so much focus on the position of the league's president as, at this point in time? And also, what's their age limit? Well, the age limit is 35. And I'm surprised that, um, I mean, we're still talking and about this and the people who are over 35. Issue, yeah. It is a contentious issue and one, uh, it baffles, you, you know, some of us why um, this, I mean, someone hasn't been thrown the book. If you're 35 or you're over 35, you're over 35. Someone should say, you're not eligible. Finish and clear, you know. Let's move on to the next peop uh, group of people who are eligible. But I think that too speaks to perhaps um, the way this process has been managed. It uh, probably attests to a lack of leadership on the part of those who are supposed to uh, be responsible for these processes um, but whatever it is it just it just points to sloppiness it points to people who have actually not done the things that they were mandated um, to do and it doesn't bode well not only for the ANC Youth League but also for the ANC the mother body um, that is supposed to be responsible for really steering um, them into like in, in a recognizable direction. We, once the conference is over and a new president is elected in your view do you think the league will have any influence on decision making in the ANC? It's, it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough on a number of fronts first of all um, the um, you look at what's happening at universities you know um, young people there are being um, taken away from the ANC by uh, parties like the EFF I mean you have the EFF and the DA winning um, SRC elections and campuses hemorrhaging um, the the SASCO and of course SASCO and the Youth League were an alliance, uh, an alliance at universities so clearly um, the weaknesses that have been inflicted whether self-inflicted or inflicted by the seniors whatever the explanation may be but the weaknesses of the ANC allied youth aligned youth formation are showing at universities but what did does what this does the weaknesses we are seeing now what they also do is to say the kind of youth league that will emerge post these elections will in fact be weak it's going to take a very long time for them to rebuild their structures for them to rebuild trust within and among themselves and as things stand given some of the names that have been thrown around as people who may emerge uh, I fear the worst may actually we are, We're running uh, out of happen. time, but we've already seen, you know, chaos erupting um, at the regional conferences. Do you think the same is going to happen at this national one? At this stage, it looks like it's going to be very, very chaotic. And just quickly, who's the front runner? 
The front runner is Colin Maine. Um, that's on the basis of the kind of support that he has. And um, if the allegations are true, I mean, he has the support of premiers from the Free State, from Pumalanga, and those are people who dispense patronage. These are powerful people who have uh, money, who dispense patronage, who can actually sway things in whatever direction. That's if the allegations are being leveled against these people are true. But purely on that basis, he remains a front runner, not for any other reason, because he's an un known quantity and actually his own colleagues are scathing about him that the guy can't speak he can't they don't think he can lead um, so and he hasn't come forward to show anybody anything so, we, we've run out of time thank you so much for the update that was SABC news contributing